Right guys, I thought I'd make this video particularly because the DMC HD collection is coming out tomorrow and being somebody that platted the original re-release on the PS3 I thought that I'd just uh, give you guys some tips out there who most likely will be struggling because let's face it uh, these games are tough when you attempt to 100% them. Right, so starting off with some basic tips. You want to look at what the enemies are doing when you engage them. Uh, they've had a lot of detail put into the patterns, so you'll be able to actually look at an enemy and see what it's going to be doing next. And it's basically about being proactive and reacting to what they're going to do that will allow you to minimize damage and maximize uh, damage output. I'd also say, uh, or even suggest, that you don't fucking button mash. Uh, you might want to, especially if this is your first sort of rodeo with these sorts of games, but do not button mash. More often than not, you'll end up basically getting killed, uh, your style meter won't raise, and you'll probably just look at yourself and think, what the fuck am I doing wrong? If you want to raise that style meter and get more orbs to use, you know, more, you know, more items and techniques to unlock, you basically want to mix up the moves you use. So throw in some uh, some commands, throw in some taunts, you know, throw in some firearms, but just, you know, keep it snappy. Don't don't be basic. Don't be a button mashing scrub. People also like to overlook the taunt. Now what the taunt does is it raises your style meter as well as giving you devil trigger which if you want to maximize your damage output uh, or you know maximize your rank it's great so don't overlook it it's an important feature i'd also suggest that if this is your first time with the games don't be afraid to buy items um, but it's important not to use them as a crutch because you won't get better as a player and if you don't get better as a player the game's just going to keep on kicking your ass because you're not learning anything there's a reason these games have a steep learning curve and a high skill ceiling. I'd also like to say though, don't be afraid of dying. These games are quite short, they're meant to be played over and over, sort of a score attack or time attack sort of system, so if you do die it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is learn from your mistakes, try and try again, and eventually you'll get where you want to be. Going back to the topic of rank, you are ranked at the end of every mission uh, on different parameters basing on the game. Uh, the main sort of parameters that are present throughout all three of the games is your style and your time and your damage. So you basically don't want to be taking damage, you want to be maximizing on damage because you want to get these fights over and done with fast and then you also want to have good style essentially mixing up your moves as I mentioned earlier. More style, better rank, more orbs to spend, everybody's fucking happy. Moving on to game specific topics. DMC1, it's slow, it's methodical, grandfather of the genre and the game that started it all. It has an enemy profiling system in the menus so if you're struggling with a particular enemy, if you want to know more about their attack patterns, you want to do some research, I suggest you definitely go take a look at those. You can also click in the right thumbstick if you want to switch between melee weapons, which you know I suggest you get used to because there will be enemies that take more damage from certain weapons than others. If you do attempt to run through the game on DMD Dark Tempest Die Mode, uh, I wish you good luck. The game's notoriously hard, the enemies hit like trucks, especially when they devil trigger, and the bosses can be quite unforgiving. It's the only game that doesn't let you stockpile items so that you can cheese through encounters. The only way you're going to get through this is by becoming a better player. And to be a better player, you have to learn. Now I'm just going to skip DMC2 altogether. I don't really have much to say other than it's an awful game. I no doubt will probably get the Platinum as I did before, but I won't enjoy it, so I won't be covering it in this video. On to DMC3. It's crazy, it's hectic, it's fast paced. It's also infuriating for people who don't understand the yellow and gold orb system. 
When you boot up the game and you want to start a new game, it will ask you if you want to use a yellow or gold orb throughout your campaign. Whatever you do, do not pick yellow. Yellow orbs basically act as a sort of makeshift checkpoint system when you die, meaning that if you do die, you'll be taken back to the last checkpoint, which is more often than not the doorway of the room you just entered. So that's not so bad, right? Until you run out of yellow orbs, and then you have to redo the entire mission. There's been so many people who basically haven't learned their, learned their lesson and complained about this, not realizing that if they'd picked a gold orb, all of this would have been alleviated. See, using a gold orb won't bring you back to the latest checkpoint, it will instead revive you on the spot, allowing you to continue your fight. If you somehow manage to run out of gold orbs, you'll be taken back to the closest checkpoint, and the game essentially acts as if you've got an infinite amount of yellow orbs. So you can see why one is more infuriating than the other, especially for newer players. I don't have much to say about Dante Bastai mode in DMC3. Uh, it's definitely not as hard as DMC1. The enemies are basically cannon fodder with stupid amounts of health, but seeing as you can stockpile weapons, uh, you can use a super costume by completing very hard mode, and you basically have more tools and dodging systems to your disposal, there's not much to be said. Getting back to general tips though before I finish up. Scattered throughout each and every game, there are secret missions. Short little scenarios which basically have a task that needs to be completed, whether it's platforming, whether it's time-based or enemy-based, uh, but it's a, it's a secret mission. It's a mission within a mission. Finding these can help improve your total rank at the end of a mission, but the main draw to them is the items they hold when completed. So they outright give you blue orb fragments which are used to increase your health overall essentially. So whilst you're playing I'd suggest keeping an eye out for suspicious looking doorways or suspicious looking marks in the terrain. People often like to complain about the dodge system in the series, stating that having to hold three buttons or two buttons and a joystick is too much to do when you're in a tight squeeze. There is obviously a solution to this, which is just jumping. Jumping holds a standard amount of invincibility frames, and if you time it right, you can tank through any attack whilst remaining unscathed. The final tip I'd like to mention is having fun, just experimenting. Use weapons you wouldn't normally use, use moves you wouldn't normally use, and use different sorts of tactics. The game's all about being stylish. It's a stylish character action game, that's the genre. Uh, you're doing yourself a disservice uh, if all you do is button mash or stick to one set of weapons. So that's that for this video. Uh, I'll definitely be picking up my copy tomorrow and I'll probably be streaming some of it as well. So yeah, tune in if you want to see me essentially run through DMC1, which, you know, it's a game that I think the current world record is like just under 40 minutes. It's, it's a short game. These are short games. Uh, that's part of the appeal to them.